What do you think? Think mum can do it? Good job. I'm Miss Manman, welcome to my channel. Today we are kicking off our Easter celebrations and I thought I should make a Easter dress. I have been slowly getting more into my sewing once again, which has been really helping my mental health. So I wanted to make a beautiful Easter dress. Oh, hey Liz dress, we meet again. Two years ago for Easter, I wanted to make a Liz dress and I used some gorgeous cotton fabric with little pansies all over it. I went according to my measurements and I was very stressed back then. There was a lot going on, especially at the start of the world melting down. And the dress only fit me for about two months before I put on a bit more weight and got a bit healthier meaning that I have a dress that does not even zip up. And I've always been a little bit heartbroken because the fabric was just so pretty. So I thought, nope, this year I'm going to make it in my current and proper size. So that's what we will be doing. We will be making a version of the Liz dress, which comes from Charm Patterns owned by Gertie. So let's get started. I decided to make the Liz dress out of Gertie's own cotton sateen fabric. This came out in Spotlight only a couple of months ago and it came in a blue and a green gingham. I originally wanted to make this in the blue version and I even bought some, thank you, <laughs> and I even bought some contrasting blue cotton to make a contrasting bust. Lo and behold, this idea was so fantastic that myself and Kara from the Dressed app, which is one of my favorite Instagram accounts, started making the same dress. At first I was really excited thinking, oh my gosh, my dress will have a twin. But then I realized I didn't want to really make a replica because let's face it, her sewing skills are so much better than mine ever will. So I decided to make a green. I have put myself on a bit of a shopping ban, especially when it comes to fabric. So I dove through my fabric stash, pulled out my green gingham fabric, but I did find some plain green cotton, which is from an old St. Patrick's Day project that I never really made. I was going to make it out of the green. So I started by cutting everything out. I only had two and a half meters of the green gingham fabric and it has this beautiful rose border print along the bottom. I wanted to keep as much of it as possible so I can have a very full skirt because full skirts are everything in life. I decided to cut out the lower bodice in the green gingham but save the shelf bust to another fabric. I have recently made a dress from Simplicity, which is also a Gertie pattern. Although I haven't released any of the photos or images or even the review, I had about half a meter of scrap fabric left over. So that is what I used to make my shelf bust with. The bottom of the bodice came together super quick and easy. It's probably the simplest part of the pattern. The pattern starts getting complicated when it comes to the straps. I follow the instructions which are super detailed and they do have really good illustrations and you can really sort of figure it out as you go. Sometimes I had to read the instructions two or three times out loud just to comprehend them. But the best thing about charm patterns is how descriptive and how adjustable their sizing is. So I have gone for the size six and I have gone for the C cup bust. For me, it all started going downhill when it came to the bra. I was so fixed on concentrating that I didn't realize that I had only turned on my camera and not pressed the record, so I did miss a lot of this. But basically, when I finally put my bra together, it was a nightmare. I think the interfacing that I used was too stiff and it just really stopped me from curving the pieces as I sewed them. It just wasn't working for me. But eventually when I finished them, 
I put everything onto the dress form and I heated up. The green I had was too bright. It just really didn't work with the softer greens in the gingham print. I asked a friend what she thought and she also agreed that it was just the wrong shade of green. So I got rid of it and thought, nope, I'm going to make a brand new bra to put into the bust, but make it out of the scrap green gingham that I made for the other simplicity dress. Because that fabric came from the same collection as the green gingham, the green tones were the same, the rose print was the same, so it was very, very similar. I attached my lining to the bodice, which I did in stages. The underbust straps become the shoulder straps and then go into the back of the dress to create a V point. Oh, the skirt. It is now time for the skirt. And what could possibly go wrong? Oh, that's right. I decided I don't have enough skirt. Because I only had two and a half meters of the green as opposed to four meters of the blue, which I originally was going to make, I realized two meters just wasn't enough. So I raced back to my local spotlight and they did still have some of the green gingham left. So I grabbed another two meters, brought it home and then I measured out what I wanted my skirt to be and cut it out of the two pieces. And I made my skirt 31 inches long. So that means I would have enough to gather at the top and to hem at the bottom without it looking too long. I sewed the two pieces together and even though they were two different lengths, I knew I would end up with a really weird seam placement because there was no way that I could make the skirt perfectly in half. I wanted it nice and full and I used my dental floss method to gather, which basically means putting my dental floss in the middle of my sewing foot and then sewing a loose zigzag over it. So when I push the fabric along the dental floss, it gathers. Four and a half meters of cotton sateen around my 27 inch waist is a challenge. At first, I didn't think it would fit. So I figured I would just cut off any excess, but somehow I managed to really push it all together and I very slowly pinned it to the bodice. When it came time to sewing my skirt to my bodice, she was thick. When I put my foot down on the sewing machine, the fabric was so thick that the foot barely moved. So I decided to put my machine to the largest sewing size, which is size four. And even then it was a very tight stitch because there was so much fabric to get to. I very slowly made my way in and then I hit a pin. This one got forced into my sewing machine, did a U-turn and then stuck its way back up. I don't know how I managed to fish hook it, but I did. And of course I snapped my sewing needle. Because of the fullness of the skirt, I didn't see all the pins because they were hidden amongst so much fabric. So I think that's how I managed to hit it. But I really took my time sewing the skirt on and eventually it was done. The last things I needed to do was add my zip, which no problems there. And then I had to hem a lot of skirt, so much skirt, so much skirt. The final thing I did was I went to the lining in the bodice, folded the bottom over and then hand sewed that along the sewing line of the skirt. And she was done. Okay, looking at her now, it's not as bad as I thought it was. I love the fullness, especially with a skirt whacked underneath. I wish I managed to add pockets, but because of the skirt being so full, I didn't then want to cut in where the side seams were to add pockets. I think at that stage, I just wanted to finish the dress because I was already so stressed out. And I know this video is going to be released a little bit late, but we're working on it. I love the swish. 
I actually don't mind the bust. I do wish that I made the under bust and shoulder strap out of the gingham. It would have just tied the whole thing in a little bit smoother, but I'm not mad at the contrasting pattern anyway. Yes, if I had interfacing in the bust, it would have been a lot stiffer and more supportive, but it turned out fine and with the right bra, it is able to look super cute. Especially for Easter, it is a great time to embrace florals, a cute animal print, and of course, pastel colors. So this dress is an absolutely perfect dress for Easter, and I can't wait to wear her. The fit of this dress was a lot better than the last attempt. Yes, I actually am a healthier weight now than I was then. So being able to go up a size and having it fit so smoothly, I was so happy with. I would love to know if you plan on doing some Easter sewing, whether it be a dress or something cute and crafty. Let me know. I just want to feel less alone in my manic brain wanting to make festive crafts. As always, in the description box below, you will find a link to my blog, which will have photos of the sewing process as well as the finished garment. So please go there to check it out. And that is all I have time for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining me on another vintage sewing adventure. I will be back next week with a, another Easter themed video and I hope you can join me then. Please feel free to like, comment and subscribe to my channel and become a part of my little YouTube community. I love seeing all you guys comment even though I don't always get to reply. It just really means a lot that you are spending some time with me and I'm hoping to keep creating content that you enjoy watching. I am still in the process of coming up with a Q&A video so if you have any questions you would like me to answer please put Q&A and then your question in the comment below and I will add it to the list. We've already got some really good ones. I will see you guys all next week but until then be kind, be true, be you and have a wonderful day. Bye!